58. The gravitational potential energy of an object is directly proportional to the mass of an object, as well as the gravitational acceleration of the planet and the height of the object above the ground. The formula is shown below. Which of the following expressions correctly represents the height of the object above ground level? Now, something that you need to be able to do is you need to know how to solve for a certain variable in an equation. So in this case, we want to solve for the height h. How can we isolate h in this equation? So what we need to do is we need to divide both sides by mg so that these will cancel. So h is going to equal to what we see on the left. It's the gravitational potential energy u divided by the mass and divided by the gravitational acceleration of the planet. So this represents the height of the object, which means that answer choice A is the correct answer. 59. The final velocity of a moving vehicle is equal to the sum of the initial velocity and the product of its acceleration and time. Which of the following expressions represent the acceleration of the moving vehicle. So we need to isolate the variable A, acceleration. How can we do so? We need to get A by itself somehow. Now what we need to do in order to do this is subtract both sides by the initial. So we're going to have V final minus V initial is equal to AT. Now, we need to separate A from T. Since they're multiplied to each other, we need to divide. So let's divide both sides by T. So the acceleration is the final velocity minus the initial velocity, which is basically the change in velocity, divided by the time. So this right here is our answer, which corresponds to answer choice B. Number 60. The combined gas law equation shown below describes the relationship between the pressure, volume, and Kelvin temperature of an ideal gas. Which of the following expressions can be used to calculate T2? So here we have two fractions separated by an equal sign. Something that we can do is cross multiply. So this will give us P2V2 times T1. And that's going to be equal to P1, V1, T2. Now, in this form, it's going to be very easy to isolate T2. All we need to do is divide both sides by P1, V1. And so T2 is equal to what we see on the left side. It's P2, V2, T1 over P1, V1, which means answer choice D is the answer. 61. The electric force between two charged particles is proportional to the magnitude of each electric charge and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the center of the charges. Which equation can be used to calculate the magnitude of the first charge Q1? So how can we isolate Q1 in this problem? What's the first thing that we need to do? What I would recommend is multiplying both sides by r squared. So on the right side, these will cancel. Next, we can divide both sides by k and q2. So k will cancel and q2 will cancel. So all we have left over on the right side is Q1. So Q1 is equal to F times R squared divided by K and divided by Q2, which means A is the right answer choice. 62. The gravitational force between two planets is directly proportional to the mass of the planets and inversely related to the square of the distance between their centers. 
which equation can be used to calculate r? So how can we isolate r in this equation? Well, first, we don't want it to be on the bottom of a fraction. So let's multiply both sides by r squared. Now the next thing we want to do is divide both sides by f. So right now we have r squared is equal to g m1 m2 over f. Now to get rid of the square, we need to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of r squared is simply r. So r is equal to what we see here, which means that d is the right answer. 63. The difference in pressure between two points in a moving fluid depends on the density of the fluid, the height difference between the two points, and the fluid velocities v2 and v1 of those two points according to Bernoulli's equation. Which of the following expressions can be used to calculate the density of the fluid? So the density of the fluid is represented by the Greek symbol rho, which looks like a lowercase p. Now we need to isolate rho, but there's two of them. So what should we do? Whenever you want to isolate a variable, and if you have more than one of that variable, what you need to do is factor. So we're going to factor out the density. So if we take out rho from rho gh, it's going to be just negative gh. And if we take out rho from this expression, it's going to be everything except rho. So this is what we now have. The last thing that we need to do is divide both sides by what we see here. That is by negative gh minus 1 half v2 minus v1 squared. And let's do the same on the left side. So on the right side, all of this will disappear. So all we have left over on the right side is the density row. On the left is the answer. So this corresponds to answer choice A. 64. So here we have the simplified version of the Doppler effect formula. And it describes the relationship between the frequency of sound measured by a stationary observer, that is FO. FS is basically the source frequency. That's the object generating the source. I mean, the object generating the sound. And V represents the speed of sound in air. Vs is the speed of the object generating the sound. So in this problem, we want to determine the speed of sound in air. We need to isolate the variable V. So how can we do that, especially since we have two of them? So at some point, we need to factor out V, but we can't do that in its current form. So we're going to have to rearrange the equation. So let's begin. The first thing we need to do is multiply both sides by V minus Vs. So on the right side, these will cancel. So right now, what we have left over is V minus Vs times FO, and that's equal to the product of these two, V times F of S. Our next step is to distribute FO. So we have FO times V, and then FO times Vs. Now, I'm going to take this term, move it to the other side. It's negative on the left side, but it's going to be positive on the right side. And this term, I'm going to move it to the left side. It's positive on the right, but it will be negative on the left. So if you want to show your work, we're going to add Vs FO to both sides. And at the same time, we're going to subtract 
v f of s from both sides. So we're going to have v f o minus v f s, and that's equal to v s f o. Our next step is to factor out v. So if we take out v, we're going to have f o minus f s, and then that's equal to v s f o. So that's how we can take out or convert two v variables into one. It's by factoring out. Our next step is to divide both sides by f o f s, or f o minus f s. So now we have our final answer. V is equal to what we see on the right side, which means answer choice C is the right answer.